welcome to the New Rugged Order Podcast, exclusively on the Hard Knock Digital Culture Channel. Now give it up to your host people, MM2K. What's up people, what's up people, I kind of cut that off a little bit too, too soon, dang, messed that up, what's up y'all, I am back for 2020, do me a huge favor, tweet this out so everybody knows that we are live man, um, I was just in the chat messing around and I told people, I got some, I got some shit on my chest, let's just, let's just go there, I got some shit on my chest, and I'm willing to, I, I'm ready to, I'm ready to, to let it go. I'm ready to let it all go. We've seen a lot of silly, stupid stuff. Uh, and, and I'm tired of it. With that being said, I also, I'm very self-aware y'all. I, I want, let me say this before, before I go too deep into this, I got a million screens set up. I kind of got like a different setup going on behind the scenes. Y'all can't see it. If any time, this thing gets laggy or messed up. Please let me know in the chat. Also, I want to shout out to people already in the chat. My homie Heath Stevens, my homie Cold Blood Sensei. Anybody else that's watching, I really appreciate y'all. Again, send this out. Let's tweet this out. Let's let everybody know that we are live. Let me do. Let me do one thing too. I'm gonna go to Twitch too. I'm gonna let everybody know that we live. TV. All right, Mighty Most 2000. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Um, Let's share it out. Share it out on Twitter. Um, And then also do this. Let's, let's put it out on Facebook. Why not, right? Why not? Uh-oh, this looks kind of weird. I ain't never... Okay, and then let's put it on one more place in Facebook. Okay, then we, yeah, I see. Hey, man, I appreciate everybody coming through. I appreciate, I appreciate it. While we're sending all this stuff out, letting everybody know that we're live. Um, I want to let everybody. I want to make everybody fully aware that I am planning. Uh oh. Oh man, ain't gonna let me put it on my page. Oh well, screw it. I knew that there had to be something. There had to be something that went wrong. This was going too well. Hold on. Oh, yeah, we're gonna leave. Ooh, I, th I thought I had to sneeze. Okay. All right. So we potentially got phone lines coming up, right? But y'all know how that work. I, I, I let y'all know in 2019, man. I, I, there's a lot of stuff that we're investing in to 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 give y'all the best content that we possibly can, and we will only grow and grow and grow by our efforts, and our efforts will help us. Um, you know, to be able to provide more, but things like the phone lines and stuff like that, they don't pay for themselves. So I will open up phone lines later on in the show. If I can get at least one message, free message in that chat, you know what I'm saying? If I can get something, you know, um, we, we can get that rolling. And I know normally, and let's not do it off the back solely of my homie, Cold Blood Sensei. Cold Blood Sensei has been a supporter from way back. You know what I'm saying? Um, always providing that support. We also got Mr. Righteous Fish out there that donates the bits and stuff. But, you know, we're, we're doing this for everybody. We try to entertain and we try to dig deep and give y'all facts stuff. So let's not let the you. Uh, we we still really appreciate the usual suspects coming through. But y'all don't sit in. Don't sit on the bleachers. OK, don't sit on the bleachers and let them carry the load for everybody. You know what I'm saying? If you're enjoying the content. Show us that you're enjoying it so we can do more. I don't mind for every penny that I get, I throw in a dollar. You see what I'm saying? But again, we we you, let, let, let's let's build as a community and let, let's cross benefit for everybody, right? Okay. So with that all being said, with all those pleasantries done, like I told you, I got some shit on my chest, y'all. What are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna talk this power talk. Y'all know how, you know how your boys feel about the Bibble Watts and the Gigahertz, okay? And we got a certain group running rampant, running wild like a bunch of raccoons with rabies talking about this stuff. We're we going to put everything in perspective, okay? Then I also want to talk about this PlayStation 5 logo reveal. I think there's some central things surrounding this whole situation that we need to talk about. 
Okay. And, and you know me, I don't like looking at stuff just like five minutes from here and, and five minutes before here. I like going deep. Okay. So we're going to talk about that and what, what that reveal and stuff kind of like foreshadows possibly in the future. Then I want to give y'all my, give y'all the NRO, the new rugged order podcast. For those that didn't know what the acronym stand for the new rugged order podcast, 2019 games of the year. And then for those of y'all that are not aware, we got a watch list here. We have a lot of groups that concern us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As far as hardcore content, one in particular made our watch list. Are they still on the watch list? And if they are, what they got to do to get off? Or how did they get off if they're not? We'll talk about all that, right? But first, let me go to my chat. Again, we got Heath Stevens in the house. He says, I think it's funny that junk box fanboys like Tim and Post have the series X sock on their social media like Phil did. <laughs> Cold Blood says, hey, fanboys like Baron should shut the F up and not... If not ass, he got his ass beat last Monday and D got his ass beat back in December for saying stuff. Yeah, hey, yo, y'all ain't never lied, man. Y'all ain't never lied, man. That was, hey, yo, that was horrible what they did to Bear. I may have participated just a little bit, just a tad bit. Just a tad bit, I may have participated. All right, let me do this because I got I to gotta go to the free chat. Sitting there, they, they say, hey, MM2K, you out here e-bagging. I'm sorry, I'm out here e-bagging. And I ain't coming up with the goods. Where's my loot chat? Where's the loot chat? Where's the loot chat? Here we go. There goes the loot chat. I just fetching data right now. Gotta do this and do that and do this and do that. Okay. And of course, my homie Cold Blood Sensei, like I said, hey yo, big up to Cold Blood Sensei, man. The homie. Cold Blood Sensei comes through and he drops something in the free messaging app. And Cold Homie Cold Blood Sensei, let me, I'm pulling it up right now, brother. Give me one second. Like I said, I got this crazy set. I got this crazy fly, crazy setup here. All right. No, the Cold Blood had dropped something. Okay. It says, finally. Catching you actually live. What's your opinion on D's and Baron's lies about PlayStation? Okay, so I'm gonna break it down like this. Cause you know what? Hey, King Player, what's up? What's up? What's going? He said, "What's going on here, man?" We're attacking the bots for a few moments. Let's the, the hell with it. You know what I'm saying? Let's the hell with it. Cause I'm 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 for clamped. I'm for clamped rather. Okay. I'm a little upset. Why am I upset? Well, let's go back a little bit. In 2017 is when your boy, and thank you, King Player, for the follow. I appreciate you. You're a good brother. Thank you, good brother. I appreciate you. But in 2017, your boy MM2K came on the scene, right? And y'all know, y'all know the deal. I, I, I came on the scene um, enthusiastically an Xbox guy. No qualms about it whatsoever. But even though I was an Xbox guy and I was sitting there poking fun at my PlayStation brethren, all y'all want is the tearjerker third person over the shoulder games, blah, 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 it's the same old stuff. I never, I couldn't, I, I wasn't aware of who were the who's who's. Like all outside of, um, what's my man that, that's coaching? I think he's coaching Liverpool. What's the dude that was from EA, man? That was my homie. That you that was running Xbox. I can't believe I I, I forgot his name, but yeah, it'll it'll come back to me. But y'all know who I'm talking about, right? So outside of him, I ain't know who ran what. I could care less. Xbox ran as a unit that was producing hardcore games that gave me the stuff that I like and I enjoyed it and I thought it was ever Peter Moore. Thank you, Heath. All right, you know, outside of Peter Moore, I didn't know. Who was who? Because it, it, it felt like that Xbox under Microsoft was running as a cohesive unit to give me the type of games that I like, right? Okay. That was then. Of course, this is now. And now what we're seeing is we're seeing the, the vision of one man 
Let's be clear. And the cat's already out the bag. We're seeing a vision of one man that's totally eradicated that hardcore sense of Xbox. And he's running amok. And he's running amok because on one side, they're basically saying, hey, bro, integrate cloud gaming, bring us the cash. And he's like, okay. And as long as he do that, and who's the CFO, right, of Microsoft and your homeboy Satya Nadella, don't give two shits what he do. Period. That's 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 how Satya gets down, okay? And they don't know much about gaming. They don't know nothing about gaming. That's why when Satya hit the scene, gaming was about to go lickety split. They don't know nothing about gaming. But even though that may have been the case, and that may be the case now, Phil has full carte blanche to do what he wants to do with Xbox. When they said that Phil Spencer has a blank check, he has a blank check. So you ask yourself, you have you have now, you have access, you have carte blanche, you are now the board of the richest company in the world. A company that doesn't even make a, a hundredth of a tenth of a percent of what you provide at a global scale is whooping your ass in gaming. You keep telling us you can't, you can't, you can't because you're rebuilding. But they're selling lampshades and, and, and some of the old sushi that was back that was stuck in the back of the refrigerator to get to this point. So if they can do that after losing $5 billion, you finally putting the gaming division out of the red into the black, finally to the CEO and CFO's satisfaction, you're trying to tell me you can't do the same? You're trying to tell me that you can't? While Sony was losing $5 billion, they were killing it on the gaming scene. They signed deals to get the, the, the Souls games exclusive on their console and they gave us the last of us and they did a whole bunch of other shit to bring in fanfare while they were losing $5 billion. You were in the plus billions of dollars, but we got to sit back and wait. Like, I feel like, I, so what has happened is me being overly enthusiastic about Xbox turned me into someone who just simply had a skepticism towards Phil and cold blood sense. I'm going to make this come full circle. I didn't forget about your question. Just, just bear with me. You know how long when did I get? But it, 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 it made me realize that we're dealing with somebody whose plan was to uproot and, and, and destroy the philosophy that made Xbox what it was. Okay. And it didn't quite work as planned. So that's why you start, you see shit like um, Hellblade 2, coming out early. He didn't want to do that. That's why you saw the gory Gears 5 promo that people was clapping like a baby still laughing. He didn't want to do that because every time he gets a claim or he gets praised for something, he falls right back to the buttercream gang shit. Okay? So, again, this is not somebody that was teetering. I was fighting a good fight. Y'all remember me and my boy Porter Rock went at it. Y'all remember that? We went at it. <coughs> Excuse me. Over Xbox. And then Porter Rock slapped me with the reality check. And the reality check, well, it wasn't when me and him was going at it. It was when he did what? If y'all remember, y'all follow my content. It was when he showed me dice. <laughs> at dice. 2018, when Phil Spencer was on stage praising PlayStation more than he was his own franchises and products. And that's when I realized that there's no fight in this guy, that this guy is on a one man wrecking ball thing. <laughs> He's on a one man wrecking ball. I'm going to get that coined. I'm going to get that uh, trademark. He's on a one man, one man wrecking ball thing to destroy what we knew of Xbox and, to, make, and, and to, to put it in his vision. So it's not a matter of how is this guy going to salvage Xbox? It's a matter of 
How can I take this name Xbox and make it into something purely a reflection of what I like in gaming? That's what Phil's doing. Don't believe me? You ain't got to take it from MM2K. You know what I hear all the time? MM Moss, you don't know what you're talking about. You making up shit. You just put words together. I hear that shit all the time. But time after time, time after time, when people say stupid stuff like that, guess what happens? The big wigs prove me right. So I've been preaching for years that this has been Phil's philosophy. And guess what we got going on right now? We got Mike Yabar coming out, exposing <laughs> what's going on at Xbox. And what did Mike Yabar say? Not MM2K, but what did Mike Yabar say? Mike Yabar said, there's only one man that makes those decisions. Now, do we think it's Satya Nadella? No, no. Satya Nadella wants money. Cloud integration. He got that. He's happy. There goes the, here goes the code to the vault. So who was that one man? Besides who? You got it. You guessed right. Phil Spencer. So since 2017, I'm not talking about my personal likes. Y'all ain't got to like Fallout 76. Y'all ain't got to like stick. That's me sharing my personal likes with y'all. But when I talk business, I mean business. I done told y'all, watch out for Phil Spencer, even when I was in my highest of Xbox rhetoric. And guess what? Mike Ball saying, watch out for Phil Spencer. I done told y'all. I done told y'all time after time that the way this crackdown was coming out for 2019, it was going to fall. It was going to just, it was going to erode. And it was going to call, it was going to cause what? A crackdown awakening. A CD3 awakening, I called it, if y'all can remember. And guess what happened? Once crackdown 3 came, people threw their hands up. I was like, we're tired of this shit. Why? Because again, the guy that's remaking Xbox, not just, he's not trying to rebuild Xbox and strengthen it. He's broken it down to his very last compound. And he's rebuilding it into his image. Solely, that's what he's doing. <coughs> and it's an Xbox, it's Xbox in name only right now. All the evidence supports it. So now here's where I take it back to my homie Cold Blood Sensei's original question about D and Baron lying about PlayStation. Here's what me, D, and Baron all have in common. Me, D, and Baron, even though D won't admit it, but we're going to keep it real here. The three of us are not the biggest stewards, or we don't want to jump out the window head first for, for PlayStation content, PlayStation exclusive content. I'm honest about that. Y'all know that. We go back and forth for all oh, F you fool F N. Oh, you, you, you like fallout and it's okay because like Z says, you can never be wrong about your opinion or your personal taste. That's fine. And I love engaging in those conversations because when the industry hears that, that lets them know who's enthusiastic about what, what works and what they should pursue. So those type of, even those debates and those arguments and, and us hashing those out, those are important. That's why I embrace those. I don't just sit there and rate re my chat and say, you don't like Fallout 76 boot. That's silly. Like a lot of my Xbox brethren used to do. If you don't agree with their philosophy, praise Phil uh, 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 over everything. Phil rules everything around me. Preem. <laughs> Preem, get the, get the crack down. Don't nobody want to play it, y'all. But if you don't believe in preen, then that's a you problem. I'm going to boot you out the chat. Remember when they was doing that? So, again, to answer Cold Blood Sensei's question, what do I feel about those, those lies? D, myself, Baron, we're not the biggest fans of PlayStation content. I'm not afraid to admit it. Baron's not afraid to admit it. 
D is D. We, that, that's a whole nother podcast. That's a whole nother channel. That being said, um, even though the difference between me and Baron is, even though I don't like PlayStation content, I'm okay with my own personal likes and saying, hey, if I don't like it, that's fine. As long as I still get the content that I like. I don't want to shut them down because I may not be the biggest stewards of it. There's a lot more people out there than me. And even though I may think another experience might be more enriching, that's me. Why am I going to take from someone else's happiness to supplement my own? That makes no sense. So even though I may not be the first to go buy certain PlayStation titles, that's why I say I always respect their business gangster. And when you can look at things unbiased, that's what you do. So Baron is heavily biased 24 seven. So because he's heavily biased and because D is just D their goal 24 seven is to always try to put PlayStation down. That's their goal 24 seven is to always put PlayStation down. Like, that's not my goal. My goal is to say to PlayStation, I respect your gangster. I, re I respect what you can do, the, the number of people that you've connected to. Now, here's how you can connect to me while maintaining those same people. I know under no circumstance do you want to get rid of 100 million people and get, a, get one MM2K. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But here's what you can do to pull me in too. Because if you can pull me in, even though I've been skeptical, you can pull me in, then man, you've dotted all your I's and crossed all your T's. You got it. It's nail in the coffin. Because at the end of the day, regardless of what my favorite platform is, I don't get a check for praising them. I don't get a check. So why despite facts, why despite the changing dynamic, why would I continue to lie as the homie Cold Blood Sensei alludes to? Why would I continue to do that and not spread truths? The truth, the fact of the matter is, is that in 2017, we really had no way of knowing Xbox's full intent. But if you were looking at things with a skeptical eye, the, regardless of your own personal bias, you knew that Phil was up to some shit. And you couldn't fully trust what was going on because you had no idea what the hell he was doing. And it was made self-evident by the middle, the latest, the middle of 2018, that this guy was trying to eradicate Xbox as it was and rebuild it in his own vision. And it was only going to be Xbox in name only. We got the world's most powerful console that launched with Super Lucky Stale and a niche driving game. Nobody else would have done that. Nintendo, as we're speaking of Baron, Nintendo released a 480p machine. Could do 480p in its best day. With Breath of the Wild, one of the most critically acclaimed games in the last decade. Like, really? You wanna you wanna run with the moniker the most powerful, the most grandest this, and you launch with a niche racer. And super lucky style. And you thought that Shadow of Mordor was going to be a system seller. You didn't care. You took that blank check that you got from Sachi Nadella and you said, I got a plan. My plan is, is that I'm trying to rebuild Xbox into my own vision. But I can't let these people go because if I let these people go and tell them my real intentions, they're going to leave. They're going to leave 
And ain't nobody going to be playing our stuff. We have some, a few stragglers that are playing Minecraft and that's it. Because we got Minecraft everywhere. So we'll have the few people that are playing Minecraft in our system and that's it. If everybody knows that we are trying to eradicate the whole hardcore gaming thing, then that, they're gone. And that's the point. That's my serious point of contention. It's not that you wanted to change Xbox. I don't run the company. Y'all do what y'all want to do. Establishments all the time. I'll go there, go to a restaurant. Hey, do y'all still have the chicken parmesan or whatever? No, we don't sell that no more. You think I start grabbing trays of marinara sauce and start beating the clerks in the face? No. I'll be like, oh, well, I can't rock out with y'all no more. Bye. And that's it. Go on to another restaurant. But under that same scenario, instead of you telling me, hey, yo, we don't have that no more. You tell me it's not here right now, but it's coming. Then you're trying to deceive me. You're trying to deceive me in a way that goes past the typical business norms. As someone that's worked in the Fortune 500 world for over 20 years, I know marketing is a form of deception. It always is and always what? Will be. It is showing you, it's not being fully transparent, it's showing you a product or a service in the best light. But you've taken your deception to a whole nother bounds. You done turned gaming into a 501c plan. You done, you done turned gaming into a timeshare. Investing us now eventually will come to fruition. <laughs> it's just the difference is you never know when you can go to the damn timeshare. You never know when you can pull the money out for your kids to go to college out of the 501c. That's what gaming on Xbox has turned to. And as Heath alluded to in my chat, you got people, they're not playing games. They're not playing games. They're not excited about games that they can get in their hands right now, experiences, the unique unique ways that you can play on Xbox. They're not excited about that. They're excited about numbers on a piece of graph paper that might equate to something down the, down the line. Now, I get it. If you are an Xbox person in 2017 and numbers like this are being touted, then I totally get it. Xbox has a deep root history in hardcore stuff. They came into this generation. They flubbed up. They didn't have the power to maintain that edginess. The edginess crown went to their competitor. They're trying to get that edge back. They're sharing numbers with you. They said a product is coming down the line to fix all that. So then... You, looking at the lineage, fill in the gaps. Even though they're not talking about games. Oh, they think they, they, Xbox used to make games all the time. Now we're here and they're making all this money. Why wouldn't they make games? Games are coming. Man. You fill in the gaps with stuff that you're not being told by looking at the lineage. So in 2017, that's okay. But in 2020, three years after the fact, three years after, uh... Your whole boy Phil done made you empty promise after empty promise after empty promise. At some point in time, you got to look at the man in the mirror and say, hold on. Something ain't right here. Fool me once, shame on you, right? But no, no, that's not what's happening. They get into this preem state of mind. Again, Phil rules everything around me. And to answer your Question, Cold Blood Sensei, it only took me, what, 41 minutes. <laughs> you done blew up my whole podcast. I told you I got some shit on my chest. But in the grand scheme of things, Cold Blood Sensei, that's why they lie. They lie because they're not the biggest fans of PlayStation content. So they take these words and these bibble watts and these gigahertz that Sony is, I mean, that Xbox is putting out there and they're hoping that if they wink, wink, wink and click their heels three times, it'll turn into some 
I don't know, to some, some magical game making box. But we're going to talk about it. We definitely going to talk about it. Let me get to the chat. He Steven says, I saw a, 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 a junk box guy say PlayStation will not be at E3 this year. Um, furthest thing from the truth, because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get into that. I'm gonna explain that, Heath, and that's a good point that you brought up. Also, we got um, Heath Stevens. He said, Mikey Barr told us that one person makes all of the gaming decisions. Exactly, exactly. So y'all, if y'all don't want to believe in M2K, if I just like to just say shit because I, I like hearing my own voice, that's fine. You, you can believe that all you want. Mikey Barr worked there. There's a reason why. There's a reason why I keep bringing up Fortune 500, Fortune 500, Fortune 500. Because Fortune 500 is all about cloning success. And whatever the industry of Fortune 500 industry thinks is successful, if they see somebody do something successful, everybody rushes to try to figure out how they can take, they can extract that success and put their logo on it. And duplicate the same thing. Because it's a rat race to make money and get investors. So if you're sitting there, got a gimmick, and you're getting investors, then you're going to go and do the same thing. It's kind of like being on YouTube. Things as simple as people thumbnails. You know how you got the thumbnail with persons like looking into oblivion with the eyes popping? That, did, that didn't just come out of nowhere. Someone started doing that. People started noticing, hey, that person's thumbnail is somewhat attractive, quote unquote. It's, it's pulling in views. Hey, let me start making the thumbnail. Now you got everybody, their grandma, the dream kids, got whoever, just making these, these ridiculous looking thumbnails. Just trivial stuff, just like the, you know how when we went when we went from breaking up stuff in the podcast to the line. That's something that I use at work whenever I'm breaking up subject matters of different presentations that I used to do. So I put a line in there. So I started doing that. Now I'm seeing everybody do it. Because they're like, oh, that looks neat. I can make that. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm, my channel wasn't successful. They did it because they just liked the way they look. But what people try to do is when they see something they can run with, don't do it. So the Fortune 500 and, and the Fortune 500 world is the same way. So that's why I keep bringing it up, and that's why Mike Yarbrough echoed the sentiments that I've been talking about since 2017. He couldn't do it before because of um, Xbox PR, but now he can. So the truth will set you free. We just got to be honest, and when we're honest as gamers, y'all can still put out entertaining com content. I could I could talk about. Thawing fish. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's all in the presentation. Y'all can still put out entertaining content, but hold these companies' feet to the fire is what I'm saying. All right, let's get on with the show, okay? So, first and foremost, let's talk about the, the, this, 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 these T-flops and these bibble watts. Let me try to do something because I want to see my chat too and make sure... I catch everything that y'all saying. Okay. So, my understanding of a T-flop, for those that are completely ignorant to the process, my understanding of a T-flop is it's a mathematical computation of different variations of, 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 of a device or a product, a technical product that helps you determine the power I was just checking something I, I was telling people to go to the broadband bully site but for some reason it's not showing that I'm live oh yeah it's showing it's showing that I'm live okay I'm gonna show y'all something real quick before I go before I get too deep into this let me show y'all something this is for those of you and you can support me from there too um hold on how do I switch this? I got to do it like this. Make sure y'all can see it. I want to see what y'all seeing right now. Okay. Y'all see this? On the right-hand side, 
That's going live right now. Oh, shoot. I ain't got to click. Okay. That's live right now. Right there. That's that's us, baby. That's us live on the website. So definitely go to the Broadband Bullies website. You know, whenever I'm live, you can go there. Let's see what it does when I click on it. And it it'll take you to Twitch. You can also go. Now, this might because I, I, I'll have too much stuff rolling at the same time. You can also go to the Hard Knock Digital Culture site. This is our website for all of our content. You can go there. I got an old ass schedule. I need to change that <laughs> up there. But um, it links to my personal Discord, which isn't active right now. But then you can you can drop you can drop a brother a buck or two. We can do some different things there. You see that? You see that? And no, and we're live there too. This is my fancy shindig. So I just want to share everybody all that stuff. All right. Y'all saw that? Good. All right. Now let's get back to the, let's get back to the, to the situation at hand now. Let me close all that out. I just wanted to show y'all that because I thought that was real neat. I was told that it wasn't working, but it is working. All right. So again, it's a th it's a theoretical math computation of of power in regards to uh uh in regards to your um your device, okay? Um but it doesn't necessarily Well, before I get to let me say this. All right. So even though you have T flops and you're talking T flops and all that other stuff, don't think just because you have consoles that are going to be doing around the same in the same vicinity of T flops, uh, that the price of them is going to be likely. Um, we talked about this yesterday. Oh, the price of them is going to be similar in all likelihood. It's not a given. Here's why. Um, everybody that's jumping for joy and shouting because um, Xbox is potentially going to have a better processor. If they have a better processor, that's, as some estimates are saying, it's 30%, 20% po more powerful than what the PlayStation 5 is going to have. Then that's gonna that that's gonna have a large effect on price. Here's how. Um, Albert Pinella, and, and again, I, I could get any of this, you know, backwards and wrong, you know what I'm saying, but I'm just giving you my understanding. But my understanding of what Albert Pinella had said in a tweet is that when these companies buy these chips, they buy them like as as like a wholesale wafer. And what that means is just imagining a sheet of uh, metal or something, just a, a sheet, a common sheet. Whenever Sony goes to AMD or Microsoft, it don't matter, whoever goes to AMD, they get a sheet that's what? I don't know what the size of the wafer is. I'm just, 10, 10, 10 by 12, okay? What they do is, depending upon the size of the, those chips and those processors, they will be able to cut out X amount of, squares to make each processor out of that wafer, out of that sheet, that 10 by 12 sheet. And again, I'm just throwing numbers out there. If Xbox has a processor that's a lot more powerful, it's going to also be bigger. Hence, it's going to also cre create less chips that can be cut from that wafer. So if Sony can get 20 chips per wafer and Microsoft can only get 11, then that's going to be a problem price wise. And here's where I think people have short term memory. Now I could be wrong again. We're, this is all speculation, but I remember Sachi Nadella saying that across the board, we're going to get to a point to where as far as Microsoft products are concerned, people are going to have to realize that they're going to have to pay premium costs for a premium device. Hence why you've seen the price of Surface machines go up. They're, they're well-made, great machines, but they went up significantly. They said, look, if Apple could do it, why can't we? Right? And I think the Xbox One X, even though it was $500, which is high for a mid-gen mid console, 
for the cost of the parts then, I think it was a big investment and in, in, in Microsoft swallowed um, a very jagged pill to eat a lot of those costs. But again, Phil had a blank check. Phil used it. He it's, Instead of coming up with key marketing, he said, we got to get rid of the power narrative that our console was so weak and we got to we gotta have something on paper that outdoes PlayStation. Not something that outdoes PlayStation physically uh, in, in retail. You know what I'm saying? We just got to be able to eliminate that on paper. If we can eliminate it on paper, then I'm happy. So what I'm saying in so many words is don't expect that same leniency towards pricing. I'm not going to expect it. Don't just think it's a given. You know, they, they said, yeah, we've learned our lesson and we're not going to come out the gate with a more expensive machine. That's, um, cost. I mean, a, a more expensive machine that's less powerful, but you got to understand how Microsoft likes to hedge words nowadays. That could very simply mean that the Xbox one X is going to be it's going to cost more than a PlayStation 5, but that's not going to be your only option. You're going to have a cheaper machine that's going to be less powerful, and you'll have a stronger machine that'll be more powerful. So if you take that scenario, those words could apply to that scenario as well. You got to understand how Microsoft hedges words. Don't get lost in the sauce. Now, does price really matter? I think we know the answer. I mean, we know the answer to that. Yes, price matters. If we were talking about the difference of a two hundred dollar machine to a three hundred dollar machine, and a three hundred dollar machine was so much more powerful, then you could get away with having a more costly machine because three hundred dollars is in an is in an acceptable realm for a console purchase. But I think five, we learned last generation and in generations past that $500 is the sweet spot. $500 is the sweet spot. Once you go past $500, you're, you're just in an enthusiast realm. You're in an enthusiast market once you get past $500. Only your most staunchest fans are going to pay $500. I mean, pay more than $500 for a console. That's not a console that's meant for mass market retail. So again, let's take some things into consideration. Price is going to matter. If uh, Microsoft gets less chips made from each wafer, as Albert Pinella explained, I could be, you know, and I could be all wishy-wash. But whatever the case may be, if they got to pay more for their parts, significantly more don't expect Microsoft to absorb those costs like how they did with the X. And I'm going off of what Satya Nadella said. When it comes to Microsoft products, people are going to have to expect to play pay premium price for a premium product period. Another thing that matters is over compute units and terawatts and all that other stuff. Price matters, but what also matters is, do you have the applications that most people desire? See, we make the we make the the wrong equation to just solely games. I, I I believe. I think if you look at this in totality, what happened was, let's take the the last two. No, let's take the last three generations into consideration. Who has more of the applications that people desire? Particularly at launch. Or who has access? What, car, what unit gives you more access to the applications that people desire? At the launch of the PlayStation 2, at launch, and big up to my homie Dirk Griggity because he brings this up all the time, at launch, the PlayStation 2 gave you access to what? A DVD player. And DVDs were sought after big time. I remember seeing plenty of stampedes at Sears. Remember Sears? They'd have a whole 
crate or pallet of PlayStation 2s lined up and you saw moms and grandmas and dads, people that never intended to play a video game in their life, but because they can get a uh, DVD player for what? $300, I think it was at the time. They were willing to do it. Okay. So that's what helped that out at launch. Wasn't no particularly no games. Gamers, though, that bought the system knew that, you know, PlayStation 1 had games. PlayStation 2 was likely going to have a whole bunch of games too. Right? And that's what further helped propel the system going into future generations. I mean, not future generations, but in future years of that generation. But at the beginning, it was, what is the most sought after content application that people desired at launch? And at the launch of the PlayStation 2, it was the ability to play DVDs. Okay. So now, let's go to the 360 era. The 360 era, what was the most sought after applications or software in the 360 era? It was all this multimedia shit. The Netflix and all that other stuff. Now, don't get me wrong. The Xbox did, the 360 did launch with some great games too. Well, it, within its launch, I would say within that first year, it did launch with uh, Gears of War. And it also launched with that Call of Duty, which was uh, originally, was it Call of Duty 2? Not This is before Modern Warfare. But it launched with Call of Duty 2, which was still a, 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 big, a big game. That was a big game. But it was all this multimedia shit that really opened people's eyes to the system. The PlayStation 3 had some multi had a lot of multimedia uh, features had its own operating system that people that a lot of people love, but it wasn't in high demand. What was in high demand was a lot of this multimedia shit so that that helped push the 360. And then just like with the PlayStation 2, as the games came, that's what helped sustain it. And that's why the 360 sold more software. Now, here's where we go into this generation. In this generation, there was no excitement for no Blu-ray player. There was no excitement for any multimedia function. You had Xbox that wounded the behemoth which was playstation which nobody was able to do ever once playstation hit the scene that was it they were crispy and clean and it all and just so then you had a you had what people thought was going to be a fight between two juggernauts who's really going to do it so what did it become about it became about the games and how you access your game It was solely so it was the, so the software that was at launch that was predominant was the games and how you access your games. And that's why I feel that people incorrectly focus on that Xbox had more um, exclusives. It don't matter. Nobody gave a shit about their exclusives, including your boy. Nobody gave a shit about no Sunset. Nobody was trying to play no goddamn Sunset Overdrive. Nobody was trying to play Rise when Rise was marketed via that dumbass Connect. Nobody gave a shit about that. Nobody cared. Dead to Rise or Dead Rise, whatever the hell that game was that Capcom makes for them. Nobody cared about that shit. Nobody cared. It was how were you going to access my Call of Duty Ghost and my Witchers and all the multi plot games that people wanted to play with all these compute, these pretty ass compute units and how Digital Foundry was making people's jaws drop by playing this mental charade with them. You had the 1080p and the physical bibblewats and all that shit they were talking. They had people in shock and awe over 1080p 60. I remember listening to a lot of podcasts and they said it flat out. 
60 frames per second is going to be the be all tell all this generation. And guess what? We hardly got it. <laughs> but the simple fact that you at launch, you had more games that were capable of it on system A opposed to system B. That's what sold system A more, despite the fact that system B had exclusive titles. Nobody gave a shit about them titles. Nobody cared because you couldn't play those titles in what? 60 frames per second. And it was sold to everybody that this unit would you allow you to play your games in 60 frames per second and they would just look better. So that's why I say the most important thing at launch, because this is technology at the end of the day, the most important thing at launch is the, the, the application or the software, whether it be games, multimedia, whatever it may be. The most important thing is how does your unit introduce people to the most sought after aspect as far as software is concerned of your unit? How, how, how does it do it? How does it do it better than its competition? PlayStation 2 Air at launch, it was about DVD player. Play, it, the Xbox 360 era is all about that multimedia shit. This generation, it was all about the 1080p60 on games. It was solely about the games at launch. Now, what's going to be the biggest seller this generation? We already, we can already tell. There's nothing else going. There's nothing else going on out here besides games, being able to do 4K, being able to do 60 frames. And streaming. Streaming is a big thing. As someone that streams every day myself, well, no, oh, I'm lying. But as somebody that was streaming every day for a while, right? Cold Blood Sensei and Right Rage and I, I was, I was, I was on my shit for a while. I was doing okay. I fell off. I fell off, but I'm coming back, baby, in 2020. I can tell you right now that one of the most frustrating things that I've had to deal with is for P I love PC gaming. That's my number one way to play. But having to deal with the codex and the and, and the and the digitors and all that other dumb shit, it would mess up my streams. Big ups to the homie Rage or not. He sat there plenty of nights and I pretty much cried myself to sleep. Oh, <laughs> welcome Ghost Week on Breakpoint is, is, is dropping all these frames. Oh. So I surmise. Again, this is your boy MM2K. Take it however you want to. I surmise that not only does the system that has games looking great, which I believe both will do, but the system that makes streaming games the easiest for you will do it because streaming games is a big thing. So, out of the two, because again, and big up to the homie Cold Blood Sensei, no Cold Blood Sensei, I'm not going to go into a Stadia manifesto. I don't believe, I like Stadia. I'm, I'm going to say, to keep it real short and sweet. I like Stadia. It's replaced my Xbox right now. Why play it? I'm getting 60 frames per second on all the games that I will play on Xbox. My Borderlands, my Metro, my Ra all the games that I played on Xbox, I got on Stadia. And I can play them better. So why my Xbox is now pointless. Ghost Recon Breakpoint. And I'm going to be able to utilize Uplay Plus, which is exclusive to PC. I'm going to be able to use that on Stadia. My Xbox is pointless. <laughs> my xbox my xbox is pointless right now so i get that i get I, i'm very self-aware nobody nobody wants to talk. and i don't blame y'all because stadia is not for mass market so i'm not going to sit there and put a lot of time on stadia even though it's something that i feel has complete has, has some for sure benefits or whatever but it doesn't have for sure benefits for the mass market right now so that's a, a, a full-fledged stadia discussion in this realm wouldn't be viable until like the latter half of 2020. We're not there yet. This thing is still in early access. So when I'm talking about who's going to win, I'm talking about PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series 
whatever X or S or GD, whatever. Okay. And out of those two, PlayStation 5 in the series, X, or whatever Xbox is coming out, I think that the PlayStation 5 is going to win in that regards. Here's why. I think it's going to be $500. $500 is acceptable especially when you get to port all your games over and they're talking about this rapid power mapping that allows you to take all your backwards compatible games, up res them and make them perform and look better. So you're carrying all that shit with you and they have a way that you can plop your games in or whatever it is and up res all that shit. So you, it, it's like you don't skip a beat. You don't skip a beat. So that's thing number one. Thing number two is that you get all this power, but you ain't got to pay $600 before it, the likely price of the play, of the Xbox Series X. But this, X, this, this Series S that comes out, that's supposed to be the 1440p machine. What the hell is 1440p? Big ups to the homie Neethals. I don't have Neethals on this show because of his work schedule, right? Normally, I do this on Mondays, um, but I, I had to do it today. Big ups to the homie Neethals. Me and Neethals was getting into this debate about, I know I wasn't going to mention but Stadia. And I was like, well, even though Stadia is not full 4K, it's up res 4K. You know what I'm saying? And even... If you, if you got a uh, resolution base of 1440p, and Neethos told me, he said, what the, what casual gamer knows what 1440p is? And you know me, I can't give up the fight, so I started making up some shit. <laughs> but Neethos is right. What casual gamer, they don't know about no goddamn 1440p, and 1440p only has its perks on 60 frame plus per second games. So if I'm a streamer and I know that I can do 4K60 streaming from a box that's $500, I'm going to pay that $500, especially if it's part of an ecosystem where I already bought a shitload of games from, which is PlayStation. So that's what's going to matter in the minds of your boy MM2K. The game system that allows you, that gives you the best games at 4K60 and makes the most simplest and easy entry point to stream your games at that same resolution will will skyrocket at launch. So Microsoft has a lot to think about. If YouTube and Twitch starts allowing the common gamer, and I believe they will, if they start allowing them to stream games at 4K60. I know YouTube does if you got the capabilities, but Twitch doesn't. Twitch only allows you to do it if you're if, if you're a partner. You know what I'm saying? But if Twitch ups that ups that uh, that that cap and you can stream to Twitch, you can stream to YouTube 4K60. And PlayStation 5 is your most cost-effective, your most feasible entry point to be able to do that. It's going to fly off the shelves. And that whole back, and if that backwards compatible thing is true, and the Xbox Series X is $600, it's going to fly off the shelf, period. Let me go to the chat, get y'all thoughts on this, but first, Big ups to Cold Blood since they said finally someone calling uh, their shiz out. I hate fanboys like those two keep spitting facts. <laughs> also, let's see what the chat got to say. Hey, Cold Blood since they thank you for, for subscribing to the channel. Hosty22, yeah, I know it's been a minute. Yeah, what's up? He Steven says I will die laughing if the PlayStation 5 is only $399. Yeah, that, that would be a stone cold killer, baby. And uh 
Let me see. He said, hey, to subscribe for the truth about Baron and D. Hey, I appreciate it, bro. It's, it's the facts. We keep everything transparent here because at the end of the day, we're going, hey, look, we can shoot the shit. Here's the, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it real with y'all. I'm going to keep it real with y'all. I know sometimes when I'm sending out shit or sometimes when y'all listening to me, I may sound all animate. Look, that's just, that's, that's all for show. This don't upset me. I enjoy this. I love this. I done talk an hour and 12 minutes about nothing. <laughs> I love doing this. I love interacting with y'all. I enjoy this stuff. I, it really don't hurt my feelings. The Fallout 76, the stadia that goes, it don't hurt my feelings because I love voicing my opinion and I love counterpunching. I love it. And I think, it's, but I've true, uh, the thing that does get to me is I wholeheartedly believe that it's important to do that. I do think it's important. That's why I do have the Stadia Doses platform. I think it's important, opposed to popular belief, for facts to prevail. Now, people may look at those facts and say, oh, who cares? Sorry, sucker. I don't give a shit. And may just step all over it, and that's fine. But at least I know that the facts are out there, right? And even though I came in here capping for Xbox, I'm going to keep it real with y'all. It's just, it's just PlayStation hate. That's what it is. It's PlayStation hate. You know what, what it is. When PlayStation got rumors coming out that it might have the power crown, what do they say? Oh, this is the latest rumor, but we got to wait. We don't know. It's not for sure. But when Xbox come out with some rumors, oh, well, it's, it's, it's simple. Just do the math, dummy. Of course this is going to be the case. And then the facts come out. Oh, well, I was just guessing. <laughs> it was just a prediction. So we know the game. And you got it. And look, my Xbox, but they're not going to want to hear this shit, but it's the truth. They have been psychologically converted to becoming a group of people that were ecstatic about things that they got in their hand and now care about things that are being promised to them. That's the name of the game. That's why you see them all on Reset Era. That's why they ain't playing no goddamn games. That's why Sony can sell one, what was it, 1. 1.5 billion games and Xbox is nowhere near it. Because you ain't gotta go to GameStop to be sold on hopes and dreams. You can get it right off of Twitter. It's the truth. And I'm not one of those gamers. I couldn't conform. God forgive me. I couldn't conform. I like playing games. That's why Xbox gets no play in my house. Because why? Why? I can't take Hopes and dreams given to me on Twitter, plug in an HDMI cord and get three hours of great gaming. I just can't. It's not, it's, it's not physically possible. So why? It's not hate. It's me putting Xbox feet to the fire. It's not, hey look, y'all know, y'all was here. What was that? Earlier this year, when... Xbox was coming to E3. Me and Neethals was sitting there. There is no way we was listening to the rumors. We fell for the okie doke. Even though I was preaching this in 2017, I'm only human, y'all. I have said, who was that? Jimmy Baker? Jimmy and Tammy Faye Baker. I always get them mixed up. Was that who that was? Jimmy and Tammy Faye Baker? Someone let me know in the chat. I have said, I knew better, but I heard all the rumors. Microsoft is coming out with stuff. I saw that. Um, I can't remember what I saw. I, I, hey, look, man, I, 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 I don't know what the hell I saw, but I saw some shit that, that made me act stupid and actually believe that he was going to bring. And then I saw Sony stumble over itself for a large portion earlier on in 2019. And I said, no, nah, man. There's some, I can't remember what it was. Something tricked me. But Phil is a tactician. He's good. He's not a dummy. 
I just don't like his vision. But he, there was something that Microsoft put out there that made me think, oh, no, this is real. This is the real deal, Holyfield. It made me look past all of the empty promises from before. And I said, they coming, I said, Z, they coming out with some shit. Me and Lethals, they're coming out with some stuff. They're coming out with some stuff, y'all. Don't deny it. They're coming out with it. And then my homie Maz came out there and said, I don't give a damn. That's why I say, y'all think Mass is an Xbox. No, Mass just don't like PlayStation. <laughs> he don't like PlayStation either. And he's more vigorous in, 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 in his uh, loathing of PlayStation. But he's going to keep it real about Xbox too. He said, I don't give a damn. This is Mass. I don't give a damn. Xbox is dog shit. Here are those 13 games that them, they going to show you. Or the 17 games that they going to show you. Mass, you will let you talk about, man. MM2K, shut the hell up. This is the 13 games they're going to show you. I don't give a damn. And lo and behold, one by one, every single goddamn game, <laughs> every single goddamn game that my brother Mass said was coming out, came out. And it wasn't the star-studded event, the nail in the coffin of PlayStation only for 2019. You 20, even if they did have a fantastic 2019, that wasn't going to wipe away the whole generation. It was just going to help usher them in into a better generation, like how PlayStation did with, at the end of the PlayStation 3 era. And I said, they finally get it. They going to do it. They were talking. There was something that they said. But regardless, I was wrong. <laughs> I said, there's no way. And that was my opinion. I wasn't wrong. I wasn't still like, you know, oh, uh, it's a fact. I wasn't out there like a lot of other sources. It's a fact they're going to do it. I, I said, I truly believe in my heart of hearts they're going to do it. And I was wrong. I have sinned. Man, was I wrong. And Phil got on stage. And not only did he not show you anything, but Xbox effectively had its worst E3, I think ever. I'm going to say ever. I've been covering E3s for a long time. I'm not going to say I've been covering them all the generations. I'm going to say I, I, I've been covering them since uh, the beginning of the 360 era. I've been covering E3s for a very long. I used to, I used to work with a publication called The New Age Faction. They're still has a presence on the internet. I mean, I'm not a current presence, but there's still, you go look at our old shit out there. So I've been covering E3 since the beginning of the 360 era. And from all, and, and so I've seen every single one. That was by far the worst E3 I've ever saw from Microsoft, from, from Xbox. When PlayStation in its 24 year history didn't even show up. You decide you decide to drop the ball and have the worst. And you not only had the worst one, but then you went up there and said shit like, I'm more excited about what I didn't show you. Now, if that doesn't show you, if that doesn't speak to you and show you that this is coming from a guy who in the heart and soul of Xbox, as far as it existing, it has nothing to do with Xbox of past. If that doesn't say that to you, that I am more excited about what I didn't show you. That would be like me having a restaurant. You're in a, it, for my Xbox people that are listening to this. That would be like me having a restaurant. You walk into my restaurant. You say, how much is the food here? Oh, it's $20 a plate. $20 a plate? God damn it. All right. Well, I'm hungry. Really not nothing of my taste within miles of here. Seems like y'all kind of have stuff. Y'all have a lineage. I'm producing good food. I haven't heard, I haven't heard about y'all. Bring me out this plate for $20. And I bring it out. There's a couple slices of cheese and some crackers. And I keep telling you. Hold on, it's coming. Then I bring you out some juicy juice. And I bring you out, lastly, some celery. And you're like, hold on, hold on. Based upon your lineage, 
and what you used to provide. I paid $20 for this plate. And you knew that. And you break me out slices of cheese, juicy juices, some goddamn celery. What the hell? And you ain't got you ain't got no other. You ain't got no competition that I'm willing to go to within miles. You got the stage all to yourself. I was willing to give you my twenty dollars, and this is the best you could do. What do you got to say for yourself? And if I were to respond to you, well, you know what, ma'am, sir. Even though you paid $20 for that and you weren't satisfied, I'm more excited about what I'm going to serve you next time you come in and pay another $20. <laughs> <laughs> ah, if that doesn't speak to a guy <laughs> that has no care about typical consumer-based expectations, I don't know what does. And if you are willing to believe and fall off the cliff like Thelma and Louise behind someone like that without them having to put anything tangible in your hands, that's not a me problem. Maybe not even a you problem. It's a psychiatrist problem. He told you, I had you drop $500 at the beginning Another $300 in 2016 or whenever the, the S came out. And now another $500 when the X came out. Really showed you nothing for it. That the other, the competition couldn't provide at a feasible level. And that's okay. Because I'm more excited about when you come and drop another five, six hundred dollars what I show you then. And there's a problem with me, I'll be damned. But that's it. Let me go to the chat before I go to the next part. He says, I don't get how Z, uh, Coldplay says, they says, I don't get how Z could be so excited about Xbox Reveal that he didn't even show anything he likes to play until now. Um, no, here's the thing. We're all human. <laughs> Was 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 rumbling through Z's veins is what's what rumbled through my veins earlier last year. I think Z wants to believe that not only will PlayStation Five come up with some shit. But he wants to believe that Xbox is, is, is taking this more seriously too. And because they did something that they normally wouldn't do, which is show you a game ahead of time, he says, and he knows from firsthand experience, he knows that that took a lot of pride swallowing of Phil. But here's what I think happened that led to that on why he did that. I don't think that was like an integrity thing, an inte you know, that it speaks to his integrity. If you've noticed, Xbox hasn't talked to 2 billion game, we trying to reach the 2 billion gamer talk anymore. Again, I told you I'm not going to make this a Stadia podcast, but we got to, but, 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 it, but it plays a part here. It plays a part here with Xbox. Regardless of what the general consensus is as far as consumers are concerned, Xbox is, is highly concerned with Stadia. That's who their competitor is in their mind. So they really thought that this Project X Cloud was going to come out here and do some shit for people. Right? But again, because I don't think, like my homie David Jaffe alluded to in multiple occasions, Xbox has a management problem. There is no accountability. I've never seen a flop this hard with the corporation as far as Xbox this generation and hardly no hits roll. The only thing that happened was Donnie D got let go. Terry Myerson dealt with them temporarily and Mike Yabarro left. And of course, Phil got promoted and they picked up Matt Booty. But as far as like a shift in the dynamic to, to say, look, something's wrong. I've never, so you got the same players pretty much there. 
They're just following one guy's philosophy this time around. So these people were brought in to follow a philosophy led by Steve Ballmer and Donnie D. Them two are gone, and now they've dealt with this whole eradicated mind state that's solely based off of what Phil wants. And they probably don't understand how to make it work. And that was probably a, a lot to do with Mike Yabar's frustrations and why he left, a part of the reason why he left. You, I've, I've never seen anything like that where you don't like gut, somewhat gut that that group to get a better group that can supplement not only uh, a product or a service that's going to make more money, but that's going to supplement something that's going to have great customer satisfaction all the way around and start bringing people back. I've never seen anything like it. But you have that dynamic here. So... To answer your question, Cold Blood Sensei, I think Z saw that they swallowed their pride a little bit and did it, but it wasn't out of uh, integrity. It was out of necessity. And it was out of necessity because they, they're, they're having to shift their strategy. Project X Cloud is, I'm telling you, I've tested this stuff out thoroughly. I don't care what a digital foundry or a whole bunch of other liars say. Project X Cloud is trash. This ain't got nothing to do with Stadia. Let's take Stadia out the equation. Stadia don't even exist. Project X Cloud, in comparison to its peers, is trash. It's trash. It looks pretty, like the Xbox One X. It looks pretty, but it's trash. It's not consistent. There's a shitload of games on there, but you don't know which one you can play. There's only a handful that are consistently play. It's premier game gears. Has serious drift issues. Like it's trash. Y'all see me streaming Stadia. I have no such problems with Stadia. Regardless of how popular it is, I'm just talking about the performance. The performance is trash. And now they realize that. They look at their competition. They're looking at NVIDIA. They're looking at Stadia. They're looking at Tencent now getting into this, working with NVIDIA. Oh, shit. And we based our technology off of Xbox One S's in the cloud. <laughs> How long is it going to take us to upgrade these server blades with Scarlet's? Oh, shit. We are nowhere near ready. Let me go back out here and rearrange the game, move the goalposts. Oh, cloud gaming is only good for when you're away from your console. Let me just be frank and honest about it. Best way to game is through console. Now, whether you believe that or not, that's one thing. But that wasn't the shit that they were selling just a few months ago. As early as November, they were talking about still the 2 billion gamers. Or as recent as November, rather. Once Stadia came out, and once there was more spotlight put on NVIDIA, and now NVIDIA's going to be working with Tencent, they realize that, that, that xCloud is for its performance at the bottom of the barrel. That's why you start seeing Mammy Jammies come out here with this bullshit. Oh, well, Xbox is fully aware of the latency issues, and they got something grander in plan. All this damage control BS. Project xCloud is dog shit. Period. So, because of that necessity for them to refocus from that 2 billion gamers that they just thought was going to melt like butter and fall into their hands, they realized that they got to sustain this console uh, crowd earlier. Remember, this is the same guy that told you, I ain't got to sell you a console. What happened to that? He just sent that five minutes ago. I ain't got to sell you a console. Giving all the appearance that the console was not the ends to the ultimate means as far as Xbox was concerned. They thought this cloud gaming was going to be their ticket. And now they're looking at their competitors and they realize that they're at the bottom of the pearl. So this ain't got nothing to do with integrity. This has everything to do with survival. But what we learned from Phil is Phil is hell bent. He is hell-bent 
or not customer satisfaction, but making his vision work. He has a vision that he will not let die. And that vision, and a major staple of that vision is not necessarily hardcore gaming. He just has to appease the hardcore console gamers just a little bit longer. So yeah, let me play with these minds a little bit. Let me do the same shit that rattled MM2K and got him to spit some shit that he knew better than. I'm going to show these mugs a clip of Hellblade. And, get, and, and we're going we gonna to show the, the Xbox One X. And he didn't even want to do that. If you take his words for it, he had to be sold to do that. But again, connect the dots. He may have been sold to do that because his back was against the wall and he had nowhere else to go. But as soon as Phil gets a little bit more wiggle room, he's going to go back to the goofy shit for all intents and purposes. And nothing's going to wave, ship, waver anybody's mind reasonably from that until we start seeing the product at hand. Until I start seeing a barrage of games being shown, I can only go by what you tell me. Gaming is not a 501c plan. Gaming is not a timeshare. I don't invest into it today to get something next year. If I buy something today, I want that shit to be superb in my hands now. And again, I told you I ain't going to talk about Stadia too much. But that's why I'm willing to double dip in a lot of games with Stadia because I'm playing them in a better way than I played them on my X. I'm getting 30 frames per second. Yeah, the, the screen might be a little bit prettier on the X. But as we know, as far as visual fidelity, frames mean more than just resolution alone. You give me pretty good resolution. You give me great frame performance. I'm sold. And you give me viable cloud performance because I, I game on the go. I'm sold. I'm not getting that from Xbox. I'm getting pretty resolution. Cold Blood Sensei says, your expectations and pre predictions for E3 2020 from Xbox and Sony. I'm going to get into that right now. Thank you, Cold Blood Sensei, for keeping me on track. So, again, I went over every, hold on one second. Let me blow my nose. I know this is getting irritating me snorting on, 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 uh, <laughs> hold the mic. Hold on. Okay. Now. The biggest things for PlayStation 5, not just at E3, Cold Blood, but this year, we'll start with PlayStation 5, is what is the game that will make you want to switch, make you want to switch from a PlayStation 4 to a PlayStation 5? Again, let's hope that that up thing is true with the backwards compatibility. But what is the game that's going to make you want to switch what is coming out for playstation 5 and only for playstation 5 that's going to make you want to switch is it going to be godfall hopefully it is that's what i'm thinking or does sony have another rabbit up their hat i i mean a, a rabbit in a hat maybe they do but that's the secret sauce for playstation 5 is what game that they're going to have that's going to make you want to switch because Jim Ryan said it himself. He wants people to switch from PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5 faster than ever. And it could be because he wants people to get off that bottleneck in the, in, in, in the capability limitations of the PlayStation 4 because they got some big things planned for PlayStation 5. And I think those things that they have planned for PlayStation 5 along with that game that's going to make you want to make that switch faster than ever is uh, going to be shown at E3. Has to be shown at E3. For Xbox, it's Halo Infinite. I don't know what they're going to do. I have no idea what Xbox is going to do. All I can go by is now their new lineage because this is not the Xbox. This is not legacy Xbox as we say in my industry. When, whenever something converts from one thing to another philosophy, 
or another entity, but they keep the same name. We say Legacy Company ABC and now the current company ABC. Legacy Xbox is gone. They're gone. This is now Phil's Xbox. Under Phil's Xbox, I have no idea what they're going to do. Has Phil completely resigned to understand that he, because of the failures of what Project X Cloud is right now, like it may have gotten some kudos from Digital Foundry, but that's not leading to anything tangible in anybody's hands. Is he fully aware of the failures that Xbox Project X Cloud is? And has he resigned to the fact that, okay, now I've tried everything in my gauntlet of sugary, uh, diabetic. Now I got to satisfy the hardcore gaming crowd. Is he going to do that? I don't know. All I can go by is his current lineage. <laughs> his lineage since 2014. I don't I, I don't trust that that's going to happen. Until I start seeing the games, I don't trust that. But I tell you what they do need to do. They need Halo Infinite has to, on screen, look like something that I would slaughter my neighborhood for. <laughs> and I know that sounds extreme, but this is the hardcore channel, right? This is the hard knock digital culture. So I'm going to come hardcore with it. Halo Infinite has to look like something that I would burn down my whole village for if I don't get it. It has to look like that in the gameplay. And it has to look like that just via the Xbox Series X. Then, in addition to that, whatever the Series S is going to be, the, the, the lower cost model, depending upon the price of the Series X, the Series S might be the more important console because you still got to bring people over to your, to your ecosystem. You're not, they're not at the two, the 2 billion gamers. You got a long way to go, Bubba. You got a long way to go, baby Bubba, because again, right now, Project X Cloud is a failure. It's a failure because it is not able to sustain itself in the way that you thought it would be when you put it up against its peers. I'm a throw. Let me throw Stadia out of it. Let's just say if everything that everybody says is true, Stadia dies tomorrow. Do you think Project X Cloud is going to be safe? Hell no. Why? Because NVIDIA GeForce is better than Project X Cloud right now, handedly, and they're about to get back by Tencent. PlayStation now when it starts getting mobile like that. It's going to be a better offering to Project X Cloud. Why? Because of its lineup. So in order to separate itself, they're going to have to go to the Pride and True Halo Infinite, and Halo Infinite is going to have to become what Destiny imagined itself to be. To be that games of a service game that everybody has to play. That pulls in the family friendly to the hardcore like. It has to. This is the most important game in Phil's career right now is Halo Infinite. It's the biggest thing in the survival of Xbox. Let that sink in. That's why I'm quiet. I want y'all to let that sink in. Think about it. And my Xbox brethren are like, no, 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 no. There, y'all are in a realm. Y'all are in, y'all are in a silo. I can't even talk to y'all. Y'all are in a silo. Y'all don't even think like the average consumer. Y'all think y'all do. But if you thought like the average consumer, you would have left Xbox years ago, like the rest of them. So apparently you don't think like the average consumer. I'm not saying you have to. I'm just saying you're not in a, pl in a place, in a state of mind to understand what's going to drive the average consumer because you're stuck in that silo. You are in the inside while everybody else is on the outside. You cannot connect to the average consumer. You just can't. Right or wrong. You just can't. And the name of the game of Xbox isn't just sticking around. They have to bring people back to the ecosystem. They're not going to survive and be viable. Do you think that they have Game Pass out there for a dollar to just keep y'all? 
to keep y'all 40 million MFers? Do y'all really think that, who thinks, do y'all think that you're really making Game Pass a dollar to keep y'all? Really? Really? Y'all are not in the mind state again to connect to the average gamer, right or wrong. Even if, let's just, let's just, again, it's their opinions. Let's just say what the average gamer likes is trivial. You don't take, you don't, you can't write the word non-trivial on a piece of paper and take it to the stock market and cash it in. Money talks. So trivial or not, you need to be able to grab their attention and bring them back. And for those of you that live and die off of Phil, what Phil Spencer says, again, preen, Phil rules everything around me. For all you preen gamers who sit up here and argue, well, Xbox does this and Xbox does that. If y'all haven't resigned to the fact that nobody cares outside of your little tribe that nobody cares, then you have no idea uh, you have no capability of understanding what's going to make Xbox successful. And you need to be concerned if Xbox is successful because if they're not successful, then they what? They go away. And if you like them that much, you don't want Xbox to what? Go away. So if you really truly like Xbox, if this is true and dear to your heart and you don't want them to go away, then you want them to be successful and you realize that in order for them to sustain success, they have to grow. They're not going to sustain success by just keeping you 40 million or for shit, let's say 50 million. Okay. They're not going to do it. They have to be able to, at the very least, chop this down the middle again, where they're battling with, with PlayStation and it's 80, 80 versus 80 million again. Maybe 90, 70 million. That's where they have to go. Why? Because just like I tell my, ex, my PlayStation brethren, the market tells you so. You can't keep getting the same, doing the same thing and be successful in the market. If you don't have any growth, then people don't invest in you. And guess what? If people don't invest in you, something's getting shut down. So my Xbox brother, y'all gotta take a real deep look in the mirror. Y'all gotta realize, y'all don't have the mental awareness to understand what Xbox needs to do in order to be successful if you've been arguing even past the xbox one x if you've still been arguing well it just fell flat or oh it was just the luck of the draw if you think that's the problem then you in no way shape or form have the capacity to prejudge what's going to be successful for the system you need to go to somebody that's abandoned xbox go to a few people and ask them what's important to them. Like how I have. And once you do that. When you get off your high horse and stop thinking that what, what's important to you is going to be important to the masses. When you come to that realization. Then you can come back to the camp. And start telling Xbox, hey, look. I may appreciate this. But you ain't getting no work, but you can't survive just off of me alone. Keep up what you're doing, but expand this way as well. Grow. Until that starts becoming your message. And, and, and add to that. And whatever your growth is going to be has to be tangible. People have to see it. Consumers don't go into gaming and invest in a 501c plan like y'all do. For those of you that don't understand what a 501c plan is, a 501c plan is a plan that you invest in for your kids to go to college. Over a 15, 16, 17, 18 year period, 
by you investing pennies, those pennies are supposed to grow to, go, uh, grow to dollars and you can use it to invest in your kid's college career or college future. That's what a lot of people are doing on Xbox. They're investing in Xbox 501c plans. They're paying $500 now for a better Xbox tomorrow. <laughs> like, no, the average consumer is not going to do that. So until you go to them and you say, hey, look, what is important to you? Why did you leave? Not just guess it. Don't just sit and guess it. Talk to people. Why did you leave? Until you start having those clear-cut, transparent conversations, you have no idea what's going to make the box successful. Because if you had any idea, there would be more people on your side than not. And, it, and, it, and that's not the case. So wake up. Now, so cold blood sensei, <laughs> that's what's going to be the secret to the success for PlayStation 5 and Xbox. It all rides on Halo. It all rides on Halo. Unless Xbox does have a big surprise, a big ticket game, an exclusive title to their ecosystem that is coming out at launch. But I don't think there's a big game coming out at launch bigger than Halo. It's, it's Halo. I doubt it. But again, these are just predictions. Now, I promise you, I, I'm self-aware. I'm not going to focus too much on Stadia. But Stadia may be a contender to a certain degree if they come out with games and they do a couple of things. Stadia has to ensure in the latter part of 2020, they get all the sought after multiplayer games. Like the call, they got to get Call of Duty. They got to establish a relationship with Activision. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if they're going to be able to establish a relationship with EA because EA looks like that they've sided with Steam and Steam, you know, is working on their Steam Link thing, their version of cloud gaming or whatever. So as part of that deal, they're probably cut off from Stadia. Who knows? But if they if that isn't the case and they got to relate, they got to establish a relationship with EA because not to not being able to get your Madden's or your FIFA's, that's going to be a big hit. They got to They got to do everything they can to establish a relationship with first and foremost Activision and then secondly with EA. They got to. Those are going to be the two biggest, uh, the two most important relationships, period. They're going to have to do it. Also, what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to. If these if these consoles can do four, 1440p, 120 frames per second, then they got to do 120 frames per second. They're already beating them by consistently doing 60. They're going to have to make the jump to 120 frames per second. They're going to have to. Okay. See, that's what Stadia needs to do. Nintendo, look, they got it the easiest. All they got to do is I think that they can't be too far behind. If these consoles are going to be doing 4K 60 consistently, then they got to at least bump up. They got to come up with that, that Pro and do at least 1080. I mean, I get it. it. It works well as a handheld, even though I think most people play a dock. But if, And the 4K upscale on the Switch ain't too shabby. I'm going to be honest. The 4K upscale on it ain't too shabby. It looks decent. A lot of people don't talk about that. Because a lot of Nintendo enthusiasts just focus on the fact, well, we ain't got to have pretty good. But the 4K upscale, when you have a dock, ain't too shabby. That being said, the, the, they need, I think they do need the Pro. They do need a Switch Pro to at least emit 1080. I don't want to say need, but I, 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 it'll go a long way. Even if they never come out with it, it's going to still be uber successful. Because again, because the Switch can do a 4K upscale. And again, I, I don't think it's too shabby. And then keep pumping out the games. That's all they gotta do. <laughs> That's it. Excuse me. Let me go to my chat. It says uh Junk's book guys are too delusional for that. Cold Blood says, they says, yeah, but Phil is, is not about that AAA life. Or, the, yeah, like short, cheap, yeah. 
Cold Blood Sensei also says in the Lutz message, my prediction, Xbox is going to launch strong, but if they don't keep the fire going, it's over like last gen. Um, there's where, and again, I can't believe we're disagreeing on this front. I don't, launch strong where? If the Xbox One X is $600, and I'm only, again, this is all predictive. This is not S's stone. I'm not saying this is S's stone. I'm just going off of the most feasible things that we know of right now. We've had them show the bigger chip. Unless PlayStation is coming with the same chip, they're going to be at a price disadvantage. Satya Nadella said they're not going to be absorbing costs like they used to. You want a premium product with Microsoft? You're going to have to expect to pay premium prices. So if that's the case, if, they, if, if, if it costs way more to make uh, that Xbox Series X, it's going to be $600. And their solution to that could be the Anaconda. I mean, not the Anaconda, the, 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 the Lockhart. That could be their solution to that. They're coming out with a cheaper machine with less capabilities. But if PlayStation 5 is sitting there in that middle spot, we already know Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us 2 is coming out this year. And for the release of the PlayStation 5, they have that technology that just upscale, that up reses that shit, makes it perform faster and better. There you go. Then you got Godfall. I, I, I mean, you know, I, I really don't know what Microsoft has in hand. It, but, but again, again, I don't know what Microsoft has in hand. But they haven't shown us anything. And I'm and with Microsoft, I've learned, and I had to be backhanded again and reminded again this year. I've learned that you cannot go by what Microsoft says. You got to go purely by what Microsoft puts in your hand. All companies deceive to a degree. All companies, prom, you know, overpromise at, at points in time. But Microsoft does it to the umph degree. And I will only believe it when I see it, when they put it in my hands. You showing me a cutscene from Hellblade. Can I play that? When? How? Exactly. He says, I meant... Game wise, strong, but yeah, if it's six hundred dollars, oh, I mean, yeah, their, their games are gonna look pretty. The games that look, it's gonna be the X all over again. Look, Sony just has better talent, and they have a bigger commitment to fidelity, and they therefore they've developed techniques with that. You got. Uh, Guerrilla Games that developed Decima and Decima is a beautiful engine and, and, and Guerrilla are just technical wizards. I don't like their games. I don't like their games, but they're technical wizards. I've done some research, man. And that what they were able to do with Killzone during the PlayStation 3 era, I was reading like this 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 um slide that they created about that. And I, I was just at all like, golly, Guerrilla should be like a support group, like how Dice LA was not before... Um, What's the call? Took them over, but people like your game, so that that that's me. But I, I I think they should have a wing that's definitely a support group that goes around. Here's what I think should happen. Okay, this is going to be a perfect segue into my next point because I want to talk about that CES, that PS5 logo reveal. Um, it got a big reception on Instagram. We reported it on the Broadband Bullies website. We talked about it there. Um. But I don't know if Jim Ryan gets mind share because let's be honest here. 2019, as far as PlayStation mind share, wasn't great. And a lot of this was curated through um, Jim Ryan. I get it. I know why Jim Ryan's in charge. And I've spoke about this earlier. Jim Ryan, um, he will, okay, Sean Layton, went all in when they went, when, 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 when placed, when Sony found out about this Xbox one X and it being more powerful, they were concerned. I remember even, there was a tweet or, or not a tweet, but a story where they even talked about, it. they said, yeah. Oh yeah. We're, we're watching this Xbox one X. Yeah. It, it's something for us to pay close attention to. And they went all in. They, Dropped the, they started off with making sure they don't even want an NPD. They dropped the price of that PlayStation 4 early to make sure 
that Xbox, even though it was more expensive, the X, that they still wouldn't, that they they, they had more PlayStation 4s fly, fly off the shelf. And I remember, because that's when me and my homie Porter Rock was, was battling over who was going to win Black Friday, and I had to go on live, and I had to admit, I said, I was talking to my source at GameStop, my, my homie, and, and talking to them, it looks like that X, that PlayStation 4 edged out Xbox the month that 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 X was released by lowering that price a few days early or a week early before Black Friday. They went on, but they lost, you know, they, you know, but that, that was more in a hold, more in a red that they went by doing that. Then just a bunch of other things that they did that were not best for the company. Because they went all in in 2018. And they had and they, and they had no answer in 2019. I think Death Stranding had a large part to do with it. I think Death Stranding was integral to the demise of Sean Layton, the demotion of uh, Yoshida, why Andrew House rolled. They were all Kojima Knights. And as Death Stranding as, as we can imagine, sucked more and more money out of PlayStation. I don't think Jim Ryan was a big fan of it. He was probably saying, what the hell is this? And that wing of PlayStation against the Jim Ryan wing of PlayStation, which I think Herman was probably part of that. He probably said, hey, we, we work with Kojima on this Decima engine and I don't know what he's what he's making. That's probably why Herman now was head of studios. He probably was working with Jim Ryan. And he probably went to, it was like, I don't know what the hell he's creating here. Like he's helped us with assets and shit for the engine, but I don't know what the hell this guy's making. And he probably was an inside source for Jim Ryan. And as the game started to go more and more down the pike, I think Jim was able to sell to the Sony brass. Look, we follow Sean Layton and them. Um, we went all in in 2018. Our stock price soared at sixty dollars a share, but a 2019 days gone is trash. To is in in in, in uh, critically in critical acclaim. Okay, days gone is trash. We got this Death Stranding that's just pilfering us for money. All these stars and we don't even know what. The, and this is a this is a mail simulator. Like come on, like. We have no buzz. We can't even go to E3 now. We're pulling out of PSX. Everything looks disastrous for us in 2019. All the while, Xbox, with them having the shitty games that they have over there, we're out selling them two to one in product, two and a half to one, three to, three to one in some locales. But they made $10 billion to our $16 billion. How the hell did they do that? I'm telling y'all, Sony board, they don't have Sony's best interest in mind. Sony probably took that and said, you know what? You right. Bye, Sean. Andrew said, I'm leaving before. I ain't booting me. I'm going. And Yoshida, they, they showed some grace to him and just put him in the mail room. <laughs> Look, uh, Jack Trenton told y'all, Sony is not about individual contributors. Sony is all about Sony. Every individual within Sony is considered a cog in the, in, the, in the master wheel. And if they're trying to transform the design of the wheel, they'll throw out a cog in, in, in a heartbeat. And I think Jim Ryan was just able to sell his case better than, uh, than Sean Layton and company were. Um, and I think Death Stranding probably played a huge role in that. Jim Ryan... Look, everybody's congratulated Kojima and talked about that. Jim Ryan doesn't even talk about it. He don't even talk. He don't even acknowledge. He don't even acknowledge its existence. But the question is, does Jim Ryan get the mind share like Sean Layton and them did? It's questionable at the very least. I mean, he doesn't. He hasn't done well in 2019 and people could chalk it up to, well, he had to quote unquote, clean up the financial mess that was created in 2019 
from Sean Layton and them going all in in 2018. And what I mean, what do I mean by when I say going all in? Well, you had spot, you had the bet, two of the best performing games of Sony all in one year. You had them spend a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? Trying to outdo the Xbox One X. And I got the stock price up to 60, but you had no answer to maintain that stock price at 60 and keep it going up. And even though Sony is in no way, shape or form and threat of closing its doors tomorrow, no, don't don't even believe that stuff. You, you get people on the internet saying that silly, stupid shit. And no, PlayStation more than enough ensures that that's not gonna happen. But things are not as stable as they would like it to be. Sony wants to be well-rounded and stable again. And... Having such a fantastic 2018, but going off such a cliff in 2019 doesn't, doesn't do that for you as a company. So my question in 2020 for Sony is, we know the games are coming. Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us 2, we know the games is coming. How are they going to be marketed? Will Jim be able to do a better job in 2020 than he did in 2019, being that those blockbuster games are coming out? I mean, 2020 inherently is just going to be better for Sony, period. They got a new console coming out. But can they really outdo Microsoft to the umph degree at a level Sean Layton would have done? I don't know. And then even when you go past 2020, how well will Sony do in Mindshare with... Herman Holst at the helm. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that guy. I don't know how I feel about that duo. I don't be honest with you. I'm a little surprised that they put Herman up there. Herman is a great technical guy, but a talent, a studio talent? No. You know who the studio talent is at Sony? It's Neil Druckmann. I'm 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 surprised. And, and, and again, I don't have any inside knowledge of this. Maybe he was approached. But I think that the, the, the most important person, and I want to get the chat's thoughts on this. The most important person at Sony to me over the last 10 years has been one guy. Neil Truckman. Neil um created Last of Us. You know, it was under his wing. He helped curate that. But before that, he did Uncharted, and Uncharted was 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 the the pilot, so to speak, for um Last of Us. And Last of Us is one of the most critically acclaimed games within the last decade. That's all you hear, Last of Us, Last of Us, Last of Us. And that whole secret sauce of Sony, even though the game of the generation was God of War, who created that template? Who created it? Neil Druckmann. And who went to all the studios and helped them implement that template so they could see success? Bill Druckmann. Who took Guerrilla Games that couldn't create a hit? A hit. Not a good game, not a game with a cold fall, a hit to save their lives and help them create one of the best-selling IPs, the best-selling new IP out of between Xbox and PlayStation. One of the most successful new IPs in, in recent memory, Horizon Zero Dawn. Who do you think helped create that template? Neil Druckmann. That's the Neil Druckmann template. And who, again, went and helped inspire Corey Balrog and worked with them to create the God of War. 
that again, the, one of the most critically acclaimed games, the critically acclaimed game on PlayStation, Neil Druckmann. And lastly, in the midst of Uncharted 4, amidst it being seen inevitable doom, because, uh, oh, what's her name? Amy, what's her, whatever her name was. Who was in charge of curating that. Amy, uh, Amy Henning, I believe the name was. That went to temporarily with EA and now is doing her own indie studio thing. In the midst of her just leaving them lost in the sauce. And Neil Druckmann having, what, a little, a little less than two years of rebooting Uncharted 4 and making it a success. Who did that again? Neil Druckmann. I am shocked that Neil Druckmann wasn't given that position. Maybe he didn't, maybe he was offered it and maybe he didn't want it. But again, we're just having a discussion here and we're just, we're just all theorizing, but I'm, just, I'm, I'm letting you know how I appeared to the, how I, I predicted a lot of this stuff. And I told y'all, I told y'all 2018 that Sean Layton went all in. Yo, Sean Layton is fine. What are y'all talking about? And now he's gone. I told y'all, listen to your boy. I got experience in this. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to warn y'all before y'all fall off the cliff. Don't Wally Coyote it in 2020. The only reason why I see Herman being offered that position is in response to, and again, I don't, I don't have any empirical proof, but again, just follow me. I think, again, you had a split between one wing of the PlayStation crew, which consisted of the, the legacy team, Andrew House, Yoshida, Sean Layton, and maybe some others, and the new wing, Andrew House, I mean, not Andrew House, uh, Jim Ryan, and who, some people that he rolled with him that we probably never even heard of. And I think Herman made a choice. And I think Herman, in working with uh, Kojima on Death Stranding, was like, I don't know what this dude is making. Like, he's just burning through resources. And he probably knew he couldn't have that conversation with Sean and them. So he had it with Jim Ryan. And Jim Ryan used that as fuel to start his own regime. And you could tell there's no love lost. You know, that there had to be a serious division because someone tweeted, please help us before this crazy man Jim Ryan destroys the company. They tweeted out to Sean Layton and he liked it. He liked it. So as someone that has journeyed through the Fortune 500 world for over 20 years, 22 years. All these companies are carbon copies of each other. They just have different personnel now. They have different cultures as far as deal with the little things. But the, the big things at the top, they're all the same. And they're all chasing each other's gimmicks. And I'm letting you know right now. I believe in my heart of hearts. That's why Herman Holtz got that job. That is if it wasn't offered to Neil Druckmann. I think Herman Holtz having an inside track on Death Stranding. And, and possibly showing some loyalty to Jim Ryan. That's how he got it. That's my belief. That is unless it was offered to Neil and he just turned it down. Because I don't, I don't, I don't see, I don't, I don't see studio head out of Herman. It doesn't make any sense. That looked like a move. That looked like a move to either reward somebody for loyalty or for some commonality. I mean, they're both out of Europe, you know. And I hate to sound so trivial like that, but. Again, but those are my thoughts. Go to Cold Blood Sensei in the, in the uh, free message. Yeah, he said, I think most people comprehend how big the Final Fantasy VII remake exclusivity is for PlayStation. What's your take on that? 
Um, I think that's big. Final Fantasy Seven is a big thing, and then they're redoing. Yeah, like that's. Um, some people I, you're seeing some comments in Final Fantasy again. Final Fantasy Seven um, is a game that ain't even my favorite Final Fantasy. My favorite Final Fantasy was Six, but I get it. It has a, it has a big following. It it's it's a tearjerker for many gamers. And whether you personally like it or not, you can't deny the, the, the attachment that it has to a lot of gamers. We got to get out of this realm of it's not for me, so it shouldn't be for any. I, I don't I never got that as long as what I like is viable. I, I don't care what anybody else likes. To me, that's silly. That's silly. All right. It's long overdue, folks. We're already over the two hour mark for the uh, podcast. I want to do this real quick and then we can roll. Um, Since the NPD for Xbox X was the biggest meltdown of bots ever. It was, it was me included. Well, no, no, you know what? I, it, it sombered me a lot, but when I talked to my, my, my friend, that's the manager at GameStop, he let me know. He was like, yeah, bro. He's like, no, nah, that X. He said they were doing well, but that that sale. And I, and I went on Z. I remember going on Z's podcast and saying that like my connect said that that them dropping that price a week early. That's what did it. And it, and it was a, it was it may have been costly, especially in the long term, but it, it had long term ramifications, too. And it was like the late great, I don't know if you, fellow hip hop fans, the late great prodigy from the rap group Mob Deep, he said in his last solo album in one of his songs, he said, if I die swinging, everybody dies. You know. <laughs> so Sean Layton's theory was, hey, look, if this Xbox One X is going to take us out, it's going down with us. If I die swinging, everybody dies. I can dig it. I can dig it. But like, I, I but I forewarned it. I told y'all. I said he went all in and it was a unsustainable strategy in the eyes of many at, at, at PlayStation and hence why we're at where we're at. All right, y'all let's do it. Long overdue. Oh, hold on. What the hell? I don't want to share it. I want to present it. Okay. Y'all. We're officially going to get into your boys for the NRO podcast. Top games of 2020. All right. We here at the NRO podcast, but NRO podcast, we like to highlight hardcore games. Okay. So these aren't games that are necessarily rich in story or, charming the cutesy gameplay and he he you know tickle you on the inside fancy these are hardcore gritty games that's what we focus on here hardcore gritty games and these are the games the top five games that we think in 2020 that exemplified hardcore gritty gameplay all right so no further ado let's get into it number five is ghost Recon Breakpoint. Now, again, I get it. This game did not reach expectations as far as sales that Ubisoft had, but I don't know what the hell they thought this was going to do. Even if y'all follow my content, I even doubted the purpose of this game. I said in the year that you had Division 2 coming out and the fact that it, it, it has a likelihood of struggling, which it did. I was right there. Um, because you know, just it's inherent with games as a service games. Like people will rip through the content no matter how much you put out there. Like, why would you put this out in the same year? And when you look, when you peer back a layer of the onion, it's because they did not have a game, a big ticket game coming out holiday 2019. And Ubisoft lives and dies off of having um big games come out holiday 2019. They have to again when Fortune 500 companies or you know what is Ubisoft privately traded? I don't know, 
But companies got to show financial success growth year over year. And not and, and, and Ubisoft, a big portion of their success is dependent upon the holiday season. So when they don't have a presence, that's a, that creates a big hit for them. So even though they had high expectations for Ghost Recon Breakpoint, it didn't make it. it the game still did pretty well. As, as I had highlighted, just in one day alone, just in one day and just one edition, which was the ultimate edition, it outsold Gears 5. Now, y'all might be saying, oh, and it charted NPD just based off of one day. Just based off of one day. Now, y'all might be saying, oh, well, how? Gears 5 was uh, was on Game Pass. Understand that, again, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, the Ultimate Edition, was also on a subscription service, which is based off of PC, which is Ubisoft's biggest market now they didn't they exposed that earlier in the year that that they're selling more games on pc the pc gamers is what helped save the division you know what i'm saying from total disaster division two this year and and that ultimate edition again was available on you play plus it came with with the subscription and and it was only charting for one day and only chart off one day so it, it pulled numbers it's just that they had high expectations for it and didn't reach those expectations but despite all that, Ghost Recon Breakpoint has great tense moments. It has a great tactical gameplay. It has a very good loot system in which um, the loot system keeps you grinding for more and more weapons to keep increasing what you got. You know what I'm saying? What they do is you have, I want to say, about maybe eight to ten base types of guns. And what you do is you'll keep running into different variations excuse me of those base types of guns those 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 uh gun types i'll say so you'll have eight to ten different gun types you'll come you'll keep running across different variations and what you do is as you upgrade certain components of that gun type it it it, it carries over into the different variations so let's just say uh damn an smg i come across an smg and I upgrade certain components within the SMG, the accuracy and stuff like that. I might get an, a, a different SMG that has different perks to it, but those same things that I've upgraded now feed over into my different S SMG. So when you make upgrades, you're upgrading the gun type, which is great. So that's a good um, um, gameplay loop as far as upgrades are concerned. And the map is great too. Um, I, you've heard me say a thousand times over, I felt like Rambo playing this game. And I've never had a game that made me feel like, you know, hiding in the trenches, trying to systematically take out people. You know what I'm saying? Having a sense of urgency because if I get caught and they radio the wrong group, that wrong group is sending helicopters after me, the wolves, which is the elite um, enemies there, and they scramble your, your HUD. You don't know where you're going. It's just, it's just crazy. So that dynamic of it is good. What I've done for all the other ones, which I, I didn't include here um, mistakenly, is that for every single game, I tell where I think it should have, it could have done better. The biggest problem with Ghost Recon Breakpoint is the viability of the uh, of the of the building missions. Like basically, missions. Each mission relies upon you going to a building and systematically taking out people in the building and and, and looting it. And that becomes tedious after some time. And it would have been nice to have like level based missions where you're going from point A to point B instead of it being in a circular place. They claim that they're going to fix that. And they also claim that they're going to fix the, the, the fact that they don't have a teammate AI. I don't think there needs to be teammate AI throughout the game because that'll turn this into Wildlands and you'll lose that tactical sense. I think what they need to do is just allow you to call in teammate AIs when you go raid these buildings because when you're doing these buildings, I mean, they're difficult. They're a challenge and it becomes too tedious. You know what I'm saying? And it's just tedious, but you're doing the same thing over and over again. So that's that's where I, I, I feel that the game uh, could do better. All right. So on to the next one. That was number five. Number four. Rage 2, again, didn't get to, it's just desserts. I hated Rage 1. This is coming from someone that hated Rage 1. I had my doubts about Rage 2, but the gunplay in Rage 2 is just excellent for a shooter. And I get it. Shooters ain't cool anymore in 2019. It's all about the single player action game that lets you fight like God of War. And, and again, don't get me wrong. I love God of War, but... 
you know, you just because you we get too heavy handed. I get that shooters aren't the number one uh, uh, genre right now, but they ain't got to be at the bottom of the barrel. And I think because of that, Rage 2 doesn't get his just due. It has excellent gameplay. Engaging enemies and the challenge is crazy. It's it's a great shooter. Great visual style too. Even you know what I'm saying? A lot of people felt a lot of a lot of guys felt a lot of uh, felt a certain way about a lot of pink that's in the game, but I think the way they implemented it is is, is visually the visual style is cool. And the character building, I, I like it a lot in the game. Now, I would have liked to see a more lively atmosphere. Traveling from area to area, there's just a few straggler enemies here and there. You can hop out your vehicle, engage them, you know what I'm saying, get some loot or whatever. But to have a little a little bit lively, more uh, uh, area would have been better. And I thought they would have improved on that from one because one lacked the same thing. But again, a lot better game than one and a very good game. That's my number four. Or that's our number four here at the... Uh, uh, in our own podcast. Number three is Metro Exodus. This also has excellent gunplay. Um, the weapon variety is fantastic. I love the makeshift weapons, the nail gun weapon. Just, that's one thing that Metro Exodus has always soared at is the weapon variety. And it's great and fantastic here. And I also love the great addition of the open environments. I'm going to say this to y'all. If y'all have never played a Metro game, you can start off with Metro Exodus, but you're robbing yourself of a great experience by not playing the other two as well. I would get access to them. If you have a PC, you can get them for cheap on PC. They're cheap everywhere. But this is just a great series. It really isn't getting its just due. This is a very talented team. For some, I don't know why. Maybe it's the aesthetic of it that people just ain't gravitating to. But 4A is a very talented team. They made a very excellent game. And this game deserves to be... A, it, it's, a, it's a fantastic game, all right? And if it wasn't for two other stellar games, this very easily could have been my number one game of the year. All right. But let's get into those two games of the year. Number two is... Jedi Fallen Order. Now, I want to say this. I don't mind third person action games. Um, and I like God of War, even though God of War isn't typical of my, um, the type of games I like to play nowadays. I love shooters. But Jedi Fallen Order is so great in so many levels that I, I, I fell in love with it. Um, great game. It's a great single player gameplay mechanics. I mean, they've, they've integrated a lot of stuff into this game and I really like it. Um, great level design, very good level design, even though it's like real linear, but it's still, you know, but it, but that's the thing right nowadays. Right. And, um, well, it can be linear, linear in a lot of ways. Um, they do have a lot of open areas, but I, I like the level design here and over there. I like, you know, I liked it, the platforming of it and all of this stuff. I thought, I think that's cool. Um, Stellar gameplay visuals. You know, the visuals are just when you're when you're slicing, you know what I'm saying? Like it would have been cool to dismember. I, I get that, but it still looks good. Like when you're when you're doing combos and stuff, like, oh man, this game just looks good all the way around. I would have liked though better AI reaction. I mean, it, it, it is challenging because they'll throw like a thousand people on the screen, but sometimes the AI it, it, it isn't the smartest, right? <laughs> and that probably is a good thing because if the AI was smart and there was a thousand of them on the screen, you probably would never beat this game. But again, I, I Jedi Fallen Order is my number two game. Okay. And for our top prize goes to Borderlands 3. Hey, look, y'all. Look. <laughs> well i can't a hey, first and foremost i gotta say this i have to apologize I've, I've been doing a lot of apologizing in 2019 um had to apologize to z about being delusional about xbox and i have to apologize to uh randy pitchford and company if y'all follow my content, I did a video where I said Borderlands 3 is going to be trash. 
Uh, my son is a is a big time Borderlands fan, and he even went and he called me up and he said, "Dad, I want you to know that I down, I, I I I I unliked your video. <laughs> I said your your video was BS. Um, I under, because of what Gearbox was doing since Borderlands Two in my mind, because I didn't like Borderlands Two. I had no hopes for this game, and I said. Randy Pitchford is mired in controversy. Gearbox can't create a good game to save their life. You had Battleborn. You just had the, their reboot of Bullet Storm. Just everything they put their hands on was just disastrous, right? And I said, it just spells doom for Borderlands 3. Like, this is a last-ditch effort. They're trying to just get some money. They knew there was hype for Borderlands because people like 2 for whatever reason. I'm not going to like 3. And then I got 3 in my hands. And 3... It's such a, it's fantastic. Like the gunplay is great. You know, the, the character building is very unique. And I didn't know, I mean, I didn't, th I thought the, the, the one thing that I liked about Borderlands uh, across the board was the character building. And I didn't think they could like tweak it any further to make it better, but they did. It's actually smarter and better. Um, the level design is fantastic. I love traversing the terrain. It's great. Um, the looting, the, the, the guns, <laughs> the guns this time around are nuts. The guns are crazy. I love them. And lastly, the replay factor, this, I mean, you could play this game forever and ever. I've stood, I, this is my third playthrough on state. Well, you know, I didn't, I, I haven't finished because I start and then I redo and I'm on stadium now and I'm loving it because I'm getting 60 frames per second. So big ups to, um, borderlands three, you know what I'm saying? And that is it. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to borderlands three. Congratulations to all five of the games that made our list, but congratulations to borderlands three for making the NRO podcast game of the year. All right. Final piece, folks, before we close our shop, because we're at the two and a half hour mark. Um, it is long overdue. I had a lot of shit on my chest. I just want to let everybody know that we, we have a watch list here. It's called the NRO, um, the New Rugged Order Anti-Hardcore Gaming Watch List. And then we give out, like, Mr. Yuck badges to those that we officially are, like, anti-hardcore gaming. Um, This company is on our watch list and they're going to remain for 2020. And of course that company is Xbox. Um, I get it. People may hear that and they may say, Oh, but Xbox is coming out with a powerful console. They showed Hellblade. Hellblade is not a game in my hands yet. All I, we saw was a cutscene. We didn't see any gameplay. The Xbox one X was super powerful and it launched with super lucky's tales. I have yet to see what Halo Infinite is going to look like. That We don't know what's coming out of this camp. So we still need to be leery of them. I mean, Xbox right now, and they, and they put themselves in this box. Xbox cannot be judged by any of the promises that they give. They should only be judged by what they put in your hands. If they can't put anything tangible in your hands, you can only go by their prior actions. So right now, they're on, a, or, or, on our hardcore watch list. But that being said, uh, what do they need to do to get off? They need to keep showing concepts early like Hellblade. They do need to keep doing that, but they got to do it consistently. They got to speak more about AAA content and talk spe about specific content. And they got to stop selling promises and make sure that games happen. And lastly, they got to be consistent in all that. If they do that, they can get off the watch list. So we, it, it, it'll be, it, it remains to be seen well, let's see what they do in 2020. I'm not giving them the benefit of the doubt until I see stuff. 15 new studios, 17 new studios mean nothing. They told us that they were having, what, 17 exclusive games, and look what happened. Like Mad said, I don't give a damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they already proved to us that they throw out big numbers, and, and it can mean nothing. All right, with that being said, before we close out, uh, my homie, Cold Blood Sensei, gives us his talk. He says, Sekiro... Devil May Cry, 
Death Stranding, Days Gone, Resident Evil, and FU Remedy for effing up Control. <laughs> Ever played Control? I hear like mixed things about that game, but we'll definitely see that. We'll, we'll, we'll check that out. All right. We went over a lot, and that was my fault, and I'm sorry, guys. But y'all, autumn next, we'll be here next week. And um, next week, we'll definitely, because of the strength of my homie Cold Blood Sensei and then what uh, Heath Stevens did, we will, the phone lines will be open next week. So, with that being said, I want to thank everybody for coming through. I want to thank Cold Blood Sensei. I want to thank Heath Stevens. I want to thank who else we got here? We got. Um, We got Beyond Sinks. Thank you for coming through. We had Holsey22. Thank you for coming through. And I appreciate Cold Blood Sensei for, for the sub to the channel. And with that said, I've gone way over. It's time for me to stop. But I will be back here at 3 because I'm going to, well, I don't know. I might not be able to. Um, I, I'm planning on streaming some, some uh I want to do some more Borderlands. I may not be able to, but let's see. And with that said, you all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. And thank you for enjoying this very long, very, this was only supposed to be an hour. <laughs> very long edition of the NRO podcast. We're crispy and clean for 2020, baby. Peace.